The Bible says here that the resurrection of Jesus was not to justify us. The resurrection of Jesus was because we had been justified. Oh, I need you to see this. Woo! Glory to God. The resurrection of Jesus was not to make us right with God. The resurrection of Jesus was God's evidence to us that we have been made right with God. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence C. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. Colossians chapter number two is what I want you to go real quickly. Colossians chapter number two. And I'm going to begin reading the word of God at verse number eight. Colossians chapter two, verse number eight. I'm going to read verses eight through 12. Then I'm going to go to Romans six, uh, Romans six and four. And then very quickly, I'm going to go to Romans chapter four, verses 23 through 25. Once again, if you're taking notes, first of all, Colossians chapter two, verses 8 through 12, then Romans chapter 6, verse 4, and Romans chapter 4, verses 23 through 25. So let me read here, and again, these scriptures are ones that we have been ministering in, around, and through for some weeks, but on this Resurrection Sunday celebration, the Spirit of the Lord spoke in my spirit that I should bring something definitive in relation to these truths so that not only do, are we more established in them, but we see something together that I believe the Spirit of God would have us to see. Colossians chapter 2 verses 8 through 12, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. And when it says not according to Christ there, once again, it means not according to what the anointed Jesus has done or accomplished for us, and not according to what is available and possible to and for you and I through the anointing. In other words, the Apostle Paul is saying, if you and I do not know what has happened to us and for us in the finished work of Jesus, and if we do not know what is available to us because of the anointing, we will be cheated. Cheated from what? Cheated out of the things that we are supposed to be experiencing living and having in this world because of what Jesus has done. Verse 9, for in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you, speaking to the new creation now, you, you new creation, you, are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Verse 11, in him, everybody say in him. Amen. Say it again, in him. Amen. Now whenever the apostle Paul says in him, speaking about in Christ, he is speaking about a new creation reality or something that occurred for you and I in, through, and because of the finished work of Jesus. He is talking to us about a status and a station or a position we have in God's eyes because 
of what Christ Jesus has done. Do you understand that? So he says, now in him you will also circumcise with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which also you were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Everybody repeat those words after me. Through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Now that's New King James. New King James says through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. The, the King James Version says through faith in the operation of God who raised him from the dead. Go to Romans very quickly, chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 4. Stay with me. I'll get there fast, but stay with me. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 4 says, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism or through our immersion into his death. Once again, I've said to you many times there that word baptism is not referring to water but it is referring to what we just read in the book of Colossians that Paul calls the operation of God or the working of God. So when it says, therefore you were buried with him through your and my immersion into his death, that is a part of that operation of God. That is a part of that working of God. The apostle is referring to the reality that God worked something in this process. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Everybody say those words after me. Raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. No, 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 no. So notice now, notice a, notice a pattern here. In Colossians, which I just read to you, chapter 2 and verse number 12 it says that we were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead so God raised him from the dead all right in Romans here chapter 6 that I just read to you it says that Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father so we've got two things here now God raised him from the dead and the glory of the Father was what raised him. Go now to Romans chapter 4, verse number 23. Romans chapter 4 and verse number 23. Now the Apostle Paul is writing and everything I have read to you thus far are the writings of the Apostle Paul. So all of these truths that Paul is articulating here are connected together. He says, verse 23, now it is written for, uh, it, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. Now he's talking about Abraham and he's using Abraham now as an example of the faith and what the result of faith in God will do. And he says, Abraham is the example. Abraham, the Bible says, believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness or his believing God caused God to credit righteousness to him. That's what that word actually means, imputed. It was credited. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed or credited to him, but also for us. Now watch this. It shall be imputed. What is he talking about? Righteousness, right standing with God. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of. Everybody say raised because of. Raised was raised because of our justification. Now, this is a very significant truth because the Bible says here, that the resurrection of Jesus was not to justify us. The resurrection of Jesus 
was because we had been justified. Oh, I need you to see this. Whoo, glory to God. The resurrection of Jesus was not to make us right with God. The resurrection of Jesus was God's evidence to us that we have been made right with God. Made right with God by what? By the finished work of Jesus, by what Jesus accomplished through his passion, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his seating, which is what Paul refers to as the operation of God or the working of God or the work of God by which Christ Jesus was raised from the dead. So Paul introduces, the, please hear me, Paul introduces this idea and this concept of faith in the operation of God in Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 12. That is, faith in the God who operates and who is operating behind the scenes. So Paul, please hear me now, because I suggest to you, as believers in Christ Jesus, that this is one of the places where our preaching of the resurrection, where our declaration of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ has fallen short in producing what it was intended to produce in the believer. We have preached and taught Jesus rose. Jesus got up. Jesus is alive. We have preached and taught. He was crucified and he was resurrected. And we have thought that the declaration of that should cause people not only to be saved, and it does, but to live an overcoming and victorious life. But here's what we have discovered. We have a lot of people who have accepted Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord, but are not living in the new creation reality, in the power and dominion, in the overcoming life that God has ordained for us to live. Why? Because we have exercised our faith in the resurrection, but not in him who raised him. Oh, you didn't get it. We have exercised our faith in the resurrection in this sense. We believe that it happened. But here Paul says, it's not enough just to believe that it happened. If you're going to walk in new creation reality, if you're going to walk in dominion, you've got to exercise your faith in him who raised him from the dead, which means you've got to know something about the operation. You've got to know something about what happened. Not just that it happened, what happened? Not just that it happened, glory to God, but how it happened. And here, the Spirit of God says that this has been given for you, you new creation, you to know. Jesus said it in his earthly ministry. He said, for the world out there, it has not been given for them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to you, it has been given to know it. And here is the problem. Not, that, not enough Christians know it. And part of that problem is because not enough preachers preach it. And not enough preachers preach it because not enough preachers understand it. And sadly, my God, you can graduate seminary and know nothing about what I'm preaching. You can get a degree, a PhD, and know nothing about what I'm preaching because this doesn't come by education. It comes by revelation. It comes by revelation of the Spirit of God. The Apostle Paul, it was revealed to him, and he wrote it for us so that the Holy Spirit could reveal it to us and lead us further into truth. Now, this operation, and I've referenced this before, this operation is precisely that which the Apostle Paul is speaking of in 1 Corinthians, go there very quickly, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse uh, number 6 through 8. Now again, this is one of these verses that we quote, and it's one of these verses that we quote in relation to all kinds of things, but it's one of these verses that we seldom quote in relation to what 
it is meaning in context. In other words, Christians quote it all the time. I have not seen, you have not heard, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 that God has prepared, but he has revealed him. And we say this, and we say it as a truth, and it is a truth. We say it as a universal truth, and it is a universal truth, but oftentimes we fail to apply it to the thing that Paul was talking about when he wrote it. Look at this. He says, however, we speak wisdom, verse 6, among those who are mature. Now that's one of the reasons why there's not a lot of this preaching going on because not a lot of the church has wanted to mature. And I believe with all of my heart as we begin to reconvene in this resurrection season, there is a remnant church that God is ushering into maturity and those who want to stay in the Pentecostal charismatic playpen will continue to live in the shallows and not see the victory and the overcoming life that God has ordained. I want to make it very clear. As the church of the Lord Jesus Christ reopens, the nursery is closed. I, I'm gonna, I want to say it uh, really again. If this Resurrection Sunday uh, says anything, it is that the nursery is closed, the playpen is closed, the rattles have been put away, the bottles are in the cupboard, and this now is for men and women who want real meat and not just milk. Because it is going to take meat to live an overcoming life with what is coming up on the earth. And we can no longer stay entertaining 30-year-old Christians in diapers. So Paul says, what we preach, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Now, I want you, I, I, I can't, the Holy Spirit won't let me get off this. In other, Paul says, I have had to curtail my message for my audience. Look, look, look. He says, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Meaning, if I'm not talking to mature people, I don't preach this wisdom. Why? Because they can't handle it. Why? Because they don't want it. Why? Because I will not cast my pearls before swine. And I submit to you, a lot of the pigs in the kingdom are dead. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Watch this. Yet not the wisdom of this age. Get it. The wisdom we're preaching is not the wisdom of this age. It's not the wisdom of this world or of its system. So now, oh, Jesus, I didn't plan to be this prophetic today. I wanted to preach a real easy message and go home. <laughs> but now, now I'm in it and I'm under it. And so now it's coming out. This is what happens when you pray in the Holy Ghost. It starts coming out differently than how you orchestrated it. Notice what, what he says. He says the wisdom we preach. So here's what, the, here's what the Holy Spirit is saying. He's saying those of you now that are going to walk with God, that are going to walk with God in this dimension of the kingdom, you are going to begin hearing truth more and more that goes against the information you're getting in the world. See, the, <laughs> the more mature you are, the more the information you receive goes against the information of the age. Right. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, which are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, watch this, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now what did Paul say? He's talking about this operation that God worked when he raised Christ from the dead. He's talking about the Father that raised up Jesus from the dead. And he is saying, in this passion, crucifixion, death, 
burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating of Christ, God was working an operation, I've called it a covert operation, a military operation, which none of the rulers of the world knew. So the Jews who were hollering crucify him didn't know. The Romans who crucified him didn't know. The people who were looking at it didn't know. The magistrates didn't know, nor did the devils or the demons who were moving on the people to crucify him. None of them knew. He's saying this operation had been hidden in God and he worked it in such a way that nobody knew what God was doing because had they known it, they would have canceled the crucifixion. They would have canceled it. He's saying if anybody along the road of this entire process had had one clue about what God was actually operating, they would have said, ah, don't kill him. Let him live. Let him live. Let him go. I know, I know, I know he was saying all kinds. Let him go because whew, if you kill him, here's what Paul is saying. If anybody had seen, Paul is saying, if anybody before it happened had seen what God has revealed to me by the Holy Ghost, they would have canceled the entire crucifixion. Why? Because they would have seen if you kill him, you're going to have millions of him on your hands. You didn't get it. <laughs> you, you didn't get it. If you kill him, you're going to have millions just like him. Better to have one. Glory to God. All right. Better to have one than to have millions. That's why you new creation, you, God calls him the first fruit of a new creation. Why? Because you're one of those fruits of that new creation. I think people fail to understand and process the reality that Jesus is the first born again man. People, people fail to process this reality. He's the first one born again. He had to be born again. Nah. See, see, this is a part of the operation. People, he had to be born again. Why? Not because he sinned. Because he died with mine. And mine was enough to separate him from God if God hadn't worked something in raising him from the dead. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? Stay with me now. So Paul here, he's dealing with this reality of the operation of God. And this is what he's in reference to. He's in reference to what God actually worked in Christ Jesus in raising him from the dead. That's what he's saying we're preaching among those who are mature. And then he goes on to say this thing that we quote all the time, but misapply. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart the things which God has prepared, literally, or finished. Does prepared sound like something finished? So here's what he's saying. I have not seen, neither has ear heard, nor has it really entered into the hearts of men the finished work of Jesus. What God actually finished in Christ Jesus. Eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. It has not even entered into the hearts of men, which is why you will not get it at most Bible schools. Because it's not in the hearts of the men who are teaching you. It has to come by, unless they're born again, spirit filled men and women of God, their intellectual degrees do not qualify them to teach the gospel. I don't know why I'm saying that. Stay with me here. Almost, almost done, really. So, he 
he's talking about this operation. And Paul is saying that if you and I are really going to experience the power of the new creation life, it is going to require faith in the operation of God, or better put, faith in the God who operated and is operating behind the scenes. And when I was meditating on this, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, what I want you to see and what I want you to understand is what the resurrection reveals to you about me. Stay here. See, Paul is talking about faith in the God who raised him. Not just the Jesus who was raised, the God who raised him. Do you see the distinction? Faith in the operation of the God who raised him. God says, I want you to understand this Resurrection Sunday. What the resurrection of Christ tells you about me. So one of the things that the church must understand now in these days is that Jesus did not come to reveal himself to us. <laughs> the Academy of Healing and Wellness Convention returns with fresh revelation about the grace and power of Jesus Christ, an essential resource for every believer, especially in these challenging times. In these extensive sessions, Bishop McClendon teaches how the Word of God is the new creation's medication, how the power to heal is always present using God's kingdom principles, and how God doesn't punish us with sickness because we did something wrong. The ministry of Jesus is a teaching, preaching, healing ministry. He heals all kinds of disease and he heals everything, which means no matter what kind they come up with, he heals it. If you desire to walk in divine health, make the Academy of Healing and Wellness your center for disease control and turn on the flow of God's healing power today. Now available on the Bishop of Pendant digital download store. But we've got to understand, Jesus did not come to reveal himself to us. Jesus came to reveal the Father to us. And when he left, he sent the Holy Spirit to reveal him. <laughs> Do you get it? So Jesus comes to reveal the Father. So Jesus says, he that has seen me has seen the Father. When Philip asks him, he says, show us the Father, and it's a Father, Jesus says, have I been so long time with you, Philip, and you have not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. So Jesus came to reveal the Father. And when he left, he sent the Holy Spirit to reveal him, which means if you are attempting to understand the finished work of Jesus with no relationship with the Holy Spirit, you are done. 